in a realm full of princesses, bend the knee to the queen. Hello and welcome to Hydra Collectibles where we let our geek flag fly. My name's Luke and I'm your host and today we are discussing one of the most powerful sorcerers in the whole of Eternia. That's right, today we're talking Shadow Weaver. <laughs> So before we get started, let me first explain that this is going to follow Shadow Weaver as she is perceived in the 2018 She-Ra Princess of Power series as made by DreamWorks and Netflix. We will touch upon some of the older filmation side of Shadow Weaver, but for the most part we are going to be discussing how she is in this series. And uh, yeah, full warning, spoilers are ahead. Shadow Weaver was a powerful sorceress and former member of the Horde army. She was the main antagonist in Season 1 of the hidden gem of a TV series titled She-Ra, Princess of Power, which aired primarily through Netflix in 2018. Now, to be fair, I could do an entire video, or in fact several videos, about this amazingly progressive show. However, for today, I just want to focus on my one favourite character, of course being Shadow Weaver. Name, Shadow Weaver, also known as Light Spinner. We'll go deeper into that name soon, because it has an amazing history within the Masters of the Universe franchise. Also sometimes referred to as Weird Scary Lady by Mamista and Old Lady by Catra. Species, Ethernian. Gender, Female. Alignment, Lawful Evil. Shadow Weaver was the second in command of the Horde forces on Eternia, and the one who was chosen to raise and train the child army that they had acquired. Of all of these children, she favoured two overall. Yep, you heard me right, two and we'll get to that shortly. Of all these children, she favoured two overall, Adora and Catra. Eventually, over time, Shadow Weaver fell out of favour with the Horde leader, Hordak. This was due to her over-obsession of power and desire to harness the Black Garnet, and so was swiftly replaced by her student, Catra. This betrayal by her superiors would lead Shadow Weaver into an uneasy alliance with the princesses by season three, trying to aid them in their search for power to bring down the Horde army. Shadow Weaver was once known as Light Spinner and was one of the most powerful sorceresses in the whole of Eternia. As Light Spinner, she was a very understanding teacher, giving both guidance and criticism to those of her students who showed immense power within the mystical arts. There was one child who was in fact to become king, known as Micah, who showed immense skill in the mystical arts. Light Spinner took Micah under her wing in the hope of harnessing his abilities in order to help both her and her superiors bring down the Horde army that was encroaching across their land. Show me. It's awful. Why would you conjure this? It's no illusion. This is really happening. An army has invaded our land. They call themselves the Horde. Fearing that their magic would not be enough to stop the Horde, Light Spinner went to her superiors in the hope of gaining permission to try a forbidden spell, a forbidden form of magic. This was known as the spell of attainment. We may not have rune stones, but there is a way we can make ourselves strong enough to stand against the Horde. Light Spinner's request was denied, with her superiors fearing that even if she was able to cast such a spell, that she would become a form of parasite, something that would be feasting upon the mystical energy of their realm. Fearing that not trying the forbidden spell would just simply bring destruction to their land, Shadow Weaver opted to try anyway. She enlisted the help of Micah, who at the time was proving to be one of the most powerful people she had ever encountered, and the two set about in order to unlock this forbidden spell. However, as predicted, things went wrong, and Micah, breaking the circle, forced Shadow Weaver to take on this mystical energy herself. This isn't right! No! This dark, mystical energy, this creature, searched about the place looking for the most powerful person within the room to bond with. And with Micah fleeing the scene, the only person left was, of course, Light Spinner. Light Spinner? Light Spinner was engulfed by this dark magic, this creature as such, her body twisting and deforming as it consumed the power that was given to her. Micah! How could you? After everything I've taught you, the spell was working. No sooner than the transformation was complete, it also came with a hunger. 
for instantly she turned towards her superiors, engulfing them and absorbing them into herself, effectively eating them. After consuming her superiors and gaining their power, she turned to Micah, who we knew was the most powerful person within the room. However, her love for Micah shone through, and instead of devouring him, she simply vanished without trace, leaving the poor boy behind, not knowing what had just occurred. So, before we continue, let's talk about that name. Let's talk about that alias that Shadow Weaver used to go by, Light Spinner, and how it ties into the overall Masters of the Universe franchise. So, the name Light Spinner, the former alias of Shadow Weaver, that actually comes from right here in the UK. That's right, back in the day, the UK was creating their own publications for She-Ra and Masters of the Universe, and it was within these books that we actually got written a history of this character. Now, it is worth noting that the character of Shadow Weaver actually belongs to Filmation. She is not part of the uh, original toy line. She wasn't part of the original idea in the story. She was made primarily for Filmation for the TV show. Now that being said, we didn't really get much of a history of the character from Filmation. We got a few bits and you did see where she came from. Um, however, the main story, this idea of Light Spinner, actually comes from these UK comics. In January 1987, in issue 23 of the UK Masters of the Universe comic strip, we saw for the first time the history and the background of various Horde members. It's worth noting that at this time we rarely saw any female characters within these Masters of the Universe comic strips. Instead, they were made for the boys and we saw a lot of these monsters and creatures and He-Man battling them. But in this particular comic book, we did get the backstory to Shadow Weaver. We found out that she was a sorceress known as Light Spinner, who was promised immense power by Hordak should she join his Horde army. Hordak used his technology to harness and strengthen Light Spinner's power, twisting and manipulating her form in the process and turning her into this ghastly form that we all have grown to love. This version of Shadow Weaver will always be memorable to me as I grew up with those original shows. However, I must say that despite my favour for this awesome looking design, I do actually like this 2018 version a hell of a lot more. So with that, let's jump back to the 2018 version and let's talk about Shadow Weaver's appearance. Due to her use of the spell of attainment, Shadow Weaver's face is heavily disfigured and thus she keeps it concealed under a red mask. She has long, sleek black hair that flows after her like a sinister shadow. She is cloaked in a maroon dress with dark red and pink details and only has a sleeve on one arm. It might sound odd on paper, but she looks badass. Not only does Shadow Weaver look badass, but she is badass. Shadow Weaver is cruel, domineering and manipulative, but most of all, Shadow Weaver has sass. Shadow Weaver often refuses to comply with anyone other than herself and does not tolerate mediocrity from others. Shadow Weaver possesses a strong element of intimidation and fear amongst the ranks of the Horde, especially those of the young training cadets. One of Shadow Weaver's more interesting traits is her apparent, if not somewhat single-minded maternal tendencies. As Light Spinner, she had great love for Micah, and somewhat maintained this love even after her transformation into Shadow Weaver. She gave Adora a great deal of focus, as well as Catra, who we'll get to later on. After fleeing the Horde army and siding with the princesses, Shadow Weaver actually started to form a bond with Glimmer, who happens to be Micah's daughter. It certainly seems that despite her evilness, she just can't seem to let go of that need and that desire to mentor and train those with the Mystic Arts. So this is the area of the video where I would normally talk about powers and abilities. However, for this particular character, it's kind of self-explanatory. She was already an incredibly powerful sorceress as Light Spinner, and her power has only grown being Shadow Weaver. One thing that I would like to point out, though, is the way that they manipulate her hair. Um, it sounds really odd, I know, but Shadow Weaver has this really cool appearance when it comes to magic. When Shadow Weaver is at peace, her hair appears much like anyone else's. It is worn down and looks very soft and silky and looks quite nice. However, when she is around magic, when that thirst for power takes over, her hair suddenly stands up all on end and she looks just eerily cool. I don't really know how else to describe it other than it looking exceptionally cool and the show seems to use this as a way to show the audience that she is kind of slipping, kind of losing power, that that hunger, that thirst is all consuming. 
So yeah, whenever you see Shadow Weaver with her hair down, you feel like it's safe to approach. But yeah, once that hair starts flowing, you better get out of there fast. So before we discuss Shadow Weaver's relationships with people, let's talk about her relationship with the Black Garnet. In the real world, a Black Garnet is a stone associated with love, friendship, light and vitality. And in the show, we are seeing this stone actually draining Shadow Weaver of her power, as opposed to her actually absorbing power from it. This, in my opinion, was actually the stone trying to heal Shadow Weaver, trying to convert her darkness into light, trying to absorb that dark mystical energy. This is a stone, of course, from the princesses. You know, every princess has a stone associated with their power, and this one that they had managed to capture and obtain for themselves was actually in the process of healing Shadow Weaver and thus making her weaker, not stronger. I actually believe that it is due to her time with this stone that she even tolerated the princesses in season 3 once she moves over to their side of things. Had she not of been drained by the stone, had some of that power not been taken from her, I'm not too sure that she would even bother with those princesses at all. I genuinely believe that the stone transformed her and let the real light spinner shine through. So with that, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Let's talk about Shadow Weaver and her relationship to Catra. Shadow Weaver has always been about the power. Whether it be from the side of good or evil, it's all she ever wants. Every person who she has attached herself to over the time, every person that she has taken under her wing to mentor, holds great power that she seeks to either influence, mould or maybe eventually take. All except Catra. That's right, her relationship with Catra was a completely different situation. It's implied in the show that Shadow Weaver allowed Catra to stick around with her and Adora simply because Adora wished it, and Shadow Weaver, wanting to please Adora, allowed it to happen. However, I don't believe this is entirely true, and in fact, I believe that out of all these people, she loves Catra the most. Shadow Weaver always knew that Adora was special, and chose to raise her for the end game of gaining absolute power for herself. However, in Catra, Shadow Weaver simply sees herself, and so yes, she came down hard on Catra, but in turn, she made her stronger and able to survive in this world in which they grew up. Because you remind me of myself. You always have. Nothing was ever easy for me either. I wasn't born to power like Adora and others. I had to earn my power, fight for it. Why should it be any different for you? What we have to remember, despite what we see aired in this show, that these are child soldiers. And so, yeah, coming down hard on them, having this brutality within their life, is actually for the greater good. Shadow Weaver wanted Catra to survive. Catra has no special skills or powers. I mean, granted, yes, she has skills, but she has no mystical powers. She has no way of protecting herself in this world other than being physically and mentally strong and thus she learns these lessons from her mother, Shadow Weaver. Shadow Weaver's love for Catra is proven within her final moments. In the final episode of this amazing show, we actually see Shadow Weaver along with Adora, who is deeply infected by this virus, in fact she's dying, uh, approach this mystical source of energy, you know, the one thing that Shadow Weaver has wanted for so long. Now, it's worth noting that at this time, she is right there with the dying Adora, and she's somewhat okay with it. You know, this was always the plan. She was using Adora, raising her as her own, in order to get to this source. She was a means to an end. And yeah, her hair is going crazy as she stares upon this mystical energy. But the one thing that snaps her out of it is hearing Catra scream. And in that moment, Shadow Weaver leaves behind the mystical energy, the thing that she has wanted for so long. She leaves it behind and instead she goes and saves her daughter. Shadow Weaver? Take Adora and run! This depiction, this version of Shadow Weaver is probably the most developed character story arc I have seen in a kids show for an exceptionally long time. I sat here watching this show with my daughter and I didn't really think much of it to begin with and then all of a sudden Shadow Weaver comes on the scene and she very quickly became my all-time favourite character. She would appear and she would get my interest, you know, she was so well-rounded, so well thought out and the story arc was so beautiful in its completion. 
you're welcome. So there you have it. That is my history of slash bio for the awesome character that is Shadow Weaver from the 2018 Netflix series of She-Ra, Princess of Power. If you guys have not checked out this show, I'd like to encourage you to do so. It is a great remastering of that original series that we were given back in the 80s. Now, I know that that series has a lot of diehard fans, people that love it, but this really is a very progressive and well-established take. Um, so yeah, please do check it out. My one regret was that I didn't know about this sooner because we actually had toy lines and clothing and everything else that I would love to own not just for myself but for my daughter and unfortunately that ship has sailed you either got one or you didn't I mean I paid more than I'd like to admit for my first Barbie but uh yeah Shadow Weaver is well worth it in my opinion so uh yeah with that I'm signing off and until next time I'll see you in another life take care